Please be seated. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but He, and that Muhammad is indeed His servant. Let me please, brothers and sisters, greet you again in the greeting words of peace. I salam alaykum. And then let me also beg your forgiveness for our opening up late. We are 25 minutes late. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is absolutely deaf on lateness. In fact, he said that there will be some believers that would lose their lives on account of late laborers. So I apologize and ask your forgiveness, and more importantly, I ask Allah's forgiveness for our opening up late um, due to our own lack of preparation. So we apologize, but we believe that Allah will bless us today with something of great value that we look forward to in terms of what is going to be shared with us this morning. Most of you know that over the last several days, we have been blessed and honored and gifted with an opportunity to experience that which is called the spiritual boot camp. Yes, sir. And it was a wonderful experience. And we have our boot camp team with us here this morning who will share. with us, some of which they have been blessed to receive, and some of which took place over the last couple of days. I mentioned to Brother Dimitri something that came to mind as I observed the boot camp, and I would like to share it because I think it's very important and critical, especially in this hour. I said to Brother Dimitri, Brother, I really appreciated your presentation for three reasons in specific. Not necessarily in this order. But the first reason was because of the spirit with which he shared what he had to share. The second thing that I appreciated was the thoroughness of his preparation. And the last thing that I, sh that I shared with him that I really appreciated was the fact that this spiritual toolbox, its value, yeah. but not just its value, because when I first became aware of the spiritual toolbox in my conversations with him, you know, I learned that there were either 10 or 12 toolboxes, approximately, roughly. And so I'm looking at these various toolboxes and I'm thinking, okay, I gotta decide, okay, you know, which one is, you know, maybe I'll get one in seven and five, and six and ten, or one through. You know, I'm trying to see which one's most appealing to me. And then as I'm looking, I'm saying, wait a minute, is this brother saying that all of these toolboxes are on this one black box? Yes. And he said, yes. And that immediately put me in the mind of, of how Allah is in terms of how much he shares and yet asks so little. And it reminded me of our brother, Brother Jabril, who was brought up by several of our presenters. Years ago, he put together an e-book in 2001. And he had on that e-book two chapters from unpublished books that he has written that have yet to come out. He put the whole two chapters. One of them was chapter three from a book called Farrakhan, God's Man on the Straight Path. It's called A Valuable Black Man. The chapter is, and it's about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. On that same e-book, he had chapter 7 from another book entitled, Where is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Is he dead or physically alive? That sound like an interesting book? The chapter that he gave on that e-book was called More Than a Vision. The book itself is over 750 pages, yet unpublished, and there are others. So he included that. He included a number of his far kind of traveler articles on different series. And he offered all of that for like $14. But you know what happened? You know how we do? We take it, copy it, give it away, 
steal it. Started stealing his material, he got upset and took it off the market. Because folks didn't want to pay $14 for all of that material. Also on that ebook was Is It Possible That the Arm of Elijah Muhammad is Still Physically Alive? That was on there incomplete. So when I saw Brother Demetrius and all that he was willing to share, that put me in that kind of a mind of a spirit being willing to share. So I appreciate Brother you know, Demetrius for that. Also, we were blessed to hear from our brother, Brother Wesley. Who yeah. reminds me of something that Brother Anthony brought up. He brought up some critical pages in our Savior has arrived. Yes, yes. Which include page 61 to 74, which originally were seven articles that appeared in the New Amsterdam newspaper in either 1956 or 1958. But in those Articles, those seven articles, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad himself proves using four primary methods the reality of God as a man mm -hmm. right. and the connection to that reality to Master Farad Muhammad. That's right. That's he right. used scripture, science, what his teacher taught him, and history. So Brother Wesley represents that key component of study that is critical for us to get into, and that is history. Yes, sir. And so we thank him for that, which he had to share with us. And lastly, uh, certainly not least, our student minister from the city of Memphis. I apologize to him already today because he said to me, brother, you know, I hope after he did his presentation, I hope you enjoyed it. And I told him, yes, sir, I did. And I felt like that was a cheap answer. Well. You know, because we say that, but so much more valuable is specific feedback. Yeah. As opposed to saying, oh, I love that. That was wonderful. That's why when we do workshops like these, we're encouraged to do evaluations, but really those evaluations, you get nothing from them. You would ask them questions about how was this, rated on a scale of one to five, give me some feedback. You would say, oh, it was great, it was wonderful. That helps you, that doesn't help you at all. It gives you nothing to work with. And so I apologized to him and told him that I wish to give him better feedback initially and much more if, if that is requested. But I appreciated also his spirit. Yes. I appreciated his thoroughness of preparation. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And I appreciated his providing us understanding of that which he presented and others from the basis and the base understanding of the teachings of the Most Honorable Way Because without that, the history makes no sense. Without that, what other authors write make no sense. It's that which has been revealed to the men, that revelation which provides the correct interpretation of whatever it is we encounter in history or in that which others write. And so I thank him for that. And the, uh, the one point that I would raise that kind of made me kind of shiver a little bit is that we should never down, like Brother Weston said, he said that we always want to raise up all these other scholars. But Come then when there's somebody, one of us, we down blank. Right. But sometimes we do that to ourselves. Okay. And we down play our own dog on ourselves. And so we should never say, based on the fact that a person is a master at Greek, or a master at Hebrew, or a master at English, that because they've mastered that language, now they are, just because of that alone, more qualified to explain the Bible that's in English, or the Quran that's originally in Arabic or the Hebrew of the Old Testament or the Greek of the New Testament because there is much, much more that is required when explaining and sharing the wisdom that is known as Scripture. And the brother demonstrated that because he, what he gave to us without, I guess, a comprehensive knowledge of error, but because it came, from my opinion, from a heart filled with love for the Word, for the teachings, for the people, and from a spirit of humility, only through that can you give what Brother gave to us yesterday. So I thank you. And so with that, brothers and sisters, we welcome you this morning into the afternoon. 
we are going to move right along and present the brother that helped to make all this happen. And he as well shared much yesterday in the in-between time that we ought to reflect on. And I'm going to say this too. And Brother Rodney, and I'm glad that the back of the room is as it is. People are paying attention. Because it irritated me when, brother, you were saying certain things and people were just running their doggone mouths. Like you just filling in space. This brother ain't here to fill no doggone space. All right? So, anybody that stands at this roster is here by Allah's permission. And we disrespect Allah when we disrespect the person that's here, whether it's a brother or sister, opening up a prayer you ain't never heard of them before. And so we say, well, let's not record that part. Let's not capture that. Let's wait until they, let's wait until the keynote, then we're going to start the DVD. Oh, so now you know better than Allah? You don't want to disrespect what the previous ones have to say? And then we go so far as to disrespect our brother. Well, that's why I'm so thankful that it is the way it is in the back. Because I believe that we will show the proper respect, not to these men, but to the God that have put these men in front of us at this particular point in time. So please just see my brother. Brother Stuart is about to mind. Let's give Brother Bobby another big round of applause. All praise is due to Allah. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, the one God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the worlds. We thank Almighty God who is the giver of every good and perfect gift, the greatest of these being his own revealed word, and that we thank him for Moses and the Torah for Jesus and the Gospel, and we thank him for Muhammad and the revelation of the Holy Quran. Peace be upon these worthy servants of Allah. But as a student and follower of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad under the leadership of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, I am most grateful to Allah for his appearance to us. That's what this weekend is That's about. Right. Right. Come on. Uh, our claim, though the scripture says, who will believe our report? But I claim that God has appeared in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever. We thank him for finding his servant upon whom he laid the key to our mental death, his Messiah, his messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we are grateful to them both in the eternal sense of the word for their student, their servant, and their apostle, but our leader, teacher, and guide, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. Let me greet you all again with the greeting words of peace. Salam alaikum. All praise. Are you feeling all right? Yes, sir. Well, you know what uh, Sister Minister, uh, Student Minister Ava Muhammad said? We're in the VIP section yes. of the universe. Yes. So you got good seats. Yes, we are thankful to Almighty God. We are. We are winding down our revival weekend. Uh, for those that have been out, you know that we've been involved in some boot camp. Uh, that's going back to basics, but even grasping spiritual concepts, historical data, empirical data, if you will. And so I'm just here to stand before you, but I got to tell you about what uh, Jack uh, Van Embry was saying this morning. Um, the, uh, if you watch the church channel, He's talking about a new world order. Mm -hmm. And he has a book out, The Dictator of the New World Order. And he shows that um, the former National Security Advisor of Jimmy Carter, Brzezinski, uh, he's trying to show that Henry Kessinger, who was Secretary of State under Richard Nixon, um, were all involved in the setup uh, in the current, more recent days of what is called the One World Government, New World Order and that they, so they each were uh, involved in having a hand in selecting before we elected uh, Barack Obama. Then he goes in a disrespectful way, he says, Louis Farrakhan says, What? Yes, I'm going to tell you what he said. No, no. Louis Farrakhan says that a black father and a white mother produced our Savior. That's our claim. Yes, is that right? Yes, it was a black father. Yes, 
And it was a white mother. Huh? And that's how we got our savior. But he's trying to say that we are saying that Barack Obama is the savior. We have made it clear from the nation of Islam that Barack Obama is president of the United States of America, but he is not the Messiah. I follow him. And we're not looking to the White House for salvation. Are you hearing me now? I look to the hills, waiting on my Lord from whence my help come. And our help will only come from God, a human being who has manifested all 99 attributes of the divine being to the most excellent degree in his own person, in his own lifetime. That's our claim. We bear those attributes. And to some degree or another, some of us show more of one and some of us show no trace of others that some show. But there's evidence that those attributes are present in us yet undeveloped. But we believe that a human being has lived to develop all 99 of them in his person to the most excellent degree. That's our claim. And we decided after boot camp, we will live and we will die on this point. Are you talking about? We have a spiritually rocky attitude about this thing. How we fired up about this thing today. And um, we're not running, hiding from enemy hell. We're looking for a few. Of them. And we'll start out with a few local folk, you understand? Just to get some skirmishes and some look like Shane Mosey might have needed some more sparring last night. I don't want to end up like him starting out the gate looking good and all of a sudden get knocked back and, and my game is gone and <laughs> my foot ain't done left me and I'm getting tagged at will for the remainder of the fight. We're not in this to get to the finish line first. For the race is not given to the swift. But we are in this to endure to the end. Yes, sir. And Satan is trying to wear us out, but Mr. Muhammad told his ministers in 1935, you doubters and slumberers, why are you slumbering today? Don't slumber in this thing, because when you slumber, the spirit that Master Farad Muhammad gives us will die in us if we don't have the will to fight for what he has revealed to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So we have decided that we're going to stand our ground. Is that right? Yes, we have decided that no one can talk us out of what we have decided is our cardinal point of belief that God appeared in the person of Master Farad Muhammad unashamedly and unapologetically. We advance this claim. I want you to hear for a few minutes from each one of them, but Brother Robert Muhammad was in the air and he landed last night in time enough to see the last end of the fight. Uh, he has come from the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. And let me just say something about the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. Uh, I forget which year it was, Brother uh, Anthony, but he put the whole nation on a fast. That's right. And he told every believer to fast for five days. That's right. And everyone that was in the labor, he charged us with seven days of fasting. That's right. And while we were in the fast, I got a phone call from the palace to, that the minister wanted me at the palace the next morning. So we scrambled around and got a flight and got out of here. And when I got to the palace, there were other regional uh, ministers that were there. And we were on the fast now. And so we sat with Honorable Louis Farrakhan from the morning, and as we were getting toward the evening, and the meeting uh, was about to end, he looked at us and we could smell food cooking. <laughs> And uh, he said, well, you all going to stay for dinner, aren't you? And we said, uh, no, the apostle, uh, you, we on the fast. He said, oh, brother, you don't fast when you're in the face of God. Come on, and let's hear from Brother Anthony Muhammad from Box number 55.
and merciful. The one God to whom all praises are due the Lord of the world. We thank him for his many blessings that we have taught from the honorable minister Lord Farrakhan that the greatest of God's blessings is divine revelation that he extends to the human family when we stray away from this scripture. So we thank him for Moses and the Old Testament and we thank him for Jesus and the New Testament. And we thank him for Muhammad and the Lord Quran. Peace be upon these worthy servants of all. I am a student of the Honorable Master Lewis Farrakhan. As a student, I thank Allah for his intervention in our affairs. Yes, sir. In the person of Master Farrakhan, the great Nafi who was to come. And we thank him for raising among us the most honorable, the mind of Muhammad. And before I finish, I should say that we are going to have to learn more about the Honorable the right. Muhammad. And we thank them both, and I say, for not leaving us comfortable. Leaving us with the champion, the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. Again, dear brothers and sisters, let me greet you with the three words of peace. I saw my like How was everyone this morning? Fine as well. And if it's for me to start, I would say this relaxing. Uh, you're going to hear something today from our brother, Brother Robert. He's coming directly from Los Angeles, spending a week with the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan. So you know he's lit up. And to our guests, I know that sometimes what you hear is strong, it's bold. Many times um, we just come straight out with it and uh, we'll just hold on. If you don't believe what we say is true, then one of the things that Jesus said was, if you don't believe that I am him, then study my work because my work testifies of me. Sometimes we may not give it to you the way that you need. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us that to get acquainted with God is not like getting acquainted with a common fool. Right. You don't learn that overnight. Right. That's a lifelong study when it comes to getting acquainted with God. But if you look around the room, you see these beautiful sisters dressed in white. You see brothers who are taking care of business in the mosque and around the area. Men that are clean. Men that are stopped drinking. We've stopped smoking. Um, we are really striving, and everybody's not perfect. See, so I don't want you to find some one Muslim who's not right. I know, I know this brother and his cousin on the other side down in South Carolina not right, therefore y'all lose a red right. Because we can play that same game. We were born in this world. We grew up in this world. And we are those who have chosen to come out of this world. We are those who have chosen to speak in the world of Look at the work that's being done. Right. Look at the attractive power in the word that the honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan brings to us. And look at us who stand before you. We are no different. When I said what I said yesterday, uh, yesterday we are no different than anyone else. But the scripture says that the dumb speak. Yeah. Well, you're looking at that. Right. See, so when I say dumb, it doesn't mean we, we're ignorant. But then again, <laughs> uh, we say it to keep it real. But then when we learn, we take this word and we articulate it to our people, then they have to wonder, well, where has he been? Because I remember when he used to be. I'm not anymore. I remember when you used to be, but you are not anymore. So we're asking you to open your heart. Open your mind. Be receptive. Many times when people come, they're already, when you hit the door, you will get checked. Well, that's it. <laughs> but just be respectful. Yes, Open your heart. Put a question in your mind. Maybe the answer to your question will come when our speaker comes before you. God is real. Yes, sir. And he's in the business of answering questions. Yes, sir. He teaches us to ask questions. That's right. And that's why I asked our brother, brother Bobby for critical feedback. I ask Sister James Heather for the same. Because of what we are trying to do, we want to make it better. We want to fine tune. We want to be new and improved and all of those things. You know how they say that as never before. We want to be better, better. So we thank everyone for their praise, but we also look for, and we are learning and growing, we also look for critical feedback. Where were we flawed? What, what could have been better so that we can make it better for the next person? We 
know we don't have all the answers. Many of the answers sit right in the brothers and sisters that I'm looking at. And the very thing that will take up over the top is in your mind. But because that's all you may have, you think that's nothing. But you might have the very piece that put all of this together the way it should be. So we look for that feedback and we welcome it because it makes us better. Some of we can use, some of we may just God, but this, at the same time, we sincerely look for it. So I thank you all for inviting us. I thank your brother, my brother, brother Rob Rodney, for having us here. Uh, we had a good time. We didn't get a chance to get me a chicken cheese steak, but uh, it's all right. You know, now you're going to come to Philly and don't get a chicken cheese steak. How are you going to do that? Get a steak. I mean, it's all right. And my poor brother comes to me because I've never had one, so I'm a little nervous. I don't want to get him one because he'd be on the plane at night coming back to Philly get these cheese tickets. You know they're addictive. You know y'all know that. So uh, I, I enjoyed myself and I hope that you have. And I'm really happy to have a good time. I've seen so many of you. And I've not seen in a while. You look so beautiful. Abduce! What's up, baby? And if you were here uh, and did not see the, the wonderful presentation that he uh, gave us on the appearances of God, uh, it's, it, the scripture is loaded with it. Uh, that DVD is available. And uh, uh, the, the slides came out real good oh, on the product, all right? So I'm just letting you know. If you think that, you know, you're going to have trouble seeing, those slides came out good. So when you're watching that DVD, you'll be able to see that real good, uh, what they're discussing with you. Because those visual aids help us to follow right. a lot of the deep and uh, voluminous information that, that came. But uh, you heard Brother Bobby talking about the toolbox, you know, and uh, it's, it's a good concept. Uh, to have, but to think that you could go on your computer and just put this little flash drive and the whole world of information comes up. Uh, and I, I have a couple of books that uh, Brother Dimitri sent me some years back, and I think it took me 15 minutes to download one of them. But there's so many pages on there. Uh, some of the books are a thousand pages. And I'm telling you, I think I'm up to page eight. Because what we have learned from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, we have so much in us. He told us that. And when I started approaching some of this that they're entertaining at the seminary school, with what we know, I, the first eight pages was more than enough. I had to just ponder over that. But um, this concept is good because it arms all of us. And, when you study some of the rabbis' writings, you'll see that there is a nation of people that will serve as a priesthood. And among all nations, that nation will be the one to help the nations come together in their relationship to God. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said all of his followers were ministers. Yes. And so this kind of nation that's coming up uh, in the north corner of our planet uh, is like a priesthood. Uh, and even though you can't hear the sound of hammer and chisel, these are two of the tools that are used to help in the building and the sculpting of someone, we are yet being churned up, we're being shaped up. Uh, there's a work going on on the inside and God who started the work in us is faithful to complete it. But I want you to hear uh, and a few, for a few minutes before our main speaker comes on today from the brother that brought the concept of the toolbox now. That's, that's a vernacular going around all over the nation. Right. And he assists Brother Anthony in the city of Memphis, Tennessee at Moss number 55. Let's welcome Brother Demetri Muhammad. Yeah. The author of In the Light of Scripture, the Dictionary to Supreme Wisdom, and the Flash Drive Spiritual Toolbox. Slow yeah. yeah. so, and the merciful. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. I'm very, very grateful and thankful to Allah for his intervention in our affairs in the person of the great Mahdi, Master Farah Muhammad. 
uh, for us. We wouldn't know of Master Farah Muhammad if it was not for his raising among us, his servant. We used to know him as the messenger of Allah, but today we are learning of him in his new role as the living, the risen, and the exalted Christ. And we wouldn't know anything of him if it was not for once again God working on our behalf. He knew what we would need before we knew what we would need. And so he prepared one from among the followers of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for us this generation when he knew the Honorable Elijah Muhammad would be cut off from us. And so I'm very thankful and grateful to Allah for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and it is in their names that we extend to each of you, you look so beautiful today. The greeting words of peace, we say, Assalamualaikum. I have to say that I'm very, very happy uh, to be here with you in the city of Philadelphia and uh, to be here uh, at the invitation of a brother that I have long admired and to come and to see his great work and all of the wonderful believers here in the Delaware Valley region. I'm just very grateful and thankful. And we had such a wonderful weekend, and you all treated us with such hospitality. And, uh, I, don't have to I don't have a lot to say today because uh, Brother Robert, as everybody has already stated, is in the building. And uh, he's coming from that one that we believe is the Son of Man. Go ahead. And uh, when you're around the sun, you cannot help but be affected by the sun. I remember Minister Farrakhan saying in a speech in New York in Temple Number 7, he said, when a man said that he has met with God, he said you should expect to see some of the effects of a man having met with God. He, and he likened it to someone being in the rays of the sun. He said, you can't be pale and not be energized and tell me you just came from being in the rays of the sun. But if a man says or a woman says they've been in the rays of the sun, you can see it in their reflection. You can see it in their countenance. And so we know that this brother has been with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, so we want to make way for him. But I just want to give a word of solidarity, a word of encouragement to the believers here at Mosque Number 12 in the great city of Philadelphia, where Islam seems to have deep roots in this city. I want to encourage us to continue our fight to represent the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. The discipline that he has given us, the cleanliness that he's given us, and the wisdom that he has given us really is going to catapult us to the leader of the entire Muslim world, the leader of all other sects and denominations. They will be subordinate to that which God has revealed to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Minister Farrakhan that they experience in truth, we can read books, we can study, Come on. but in truth, the greatest witness bearer of the veracity of point number 12 of the divinity of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Minister Farrakhan is in each and every one of us. And some people who can't read, some people that are illiterate, but if they can meet an FOI, Come on. if they can meet an MGT that is transformed to the degree that they stick out like a sore thumb, not because of evil or uncleanness, but because they are righteous in a world of unrighteousness. Like they said in the scripture, what manner of man is this? What manner of people is this? So I'm very happy and very honored to be here with you. And uh, I always share with the brothers during Juma that whenever we have our Juma service, at that specific moment in time, we are united with all of the world's over 1.8 billion Muslims right. praying and seeking the favor and the protection and the blessing of Allah. And in the mosque of the nation of Islam, it is likewise. Every time we open up and we have these meetings on Sunday, right. we are united with all of the other brothers and sisters in the nation of Islam around the country and around the globe. So it's a good feeling for me today to be out of my home city, to be here with you, that we are in synchronicity when we're in Memphis and you're in Philadelphia and others are in uh, Delaware and some are in New Jersey and New York. It's a good feeling to see the brothers that I'm in unity with every week following the leadership of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I leave Philadelphia strengthened. I leave Philadelphia encouraged and more hopeful and more energized to continue this fight on behalf of God, his messenger, his servant, and on behalf of our people. I leave you with the green words of peace of our soul. Thank you.
went to a lock. And um, we're going to um, uh, hear from one more before our main speaker comes up. But I wanted to say something that for those that may be visiting from other centers, you know, uh, the way study goes here, people submit their email address. And then with the email address, uh, reference material, the focus of the study, first of all, for Friday, reference material, and that that can help to prepare people for a discussion on Friday. But if Bobby puts that together, then that's sent out to us through the email circuit, so you have a few days ahead of time to pull that right off the computer and look at certain areas and so that they can really prepare you for the focus study uh, for that night. Anybody that, that's from another city, you want to learn that method, you know, see us before you leave, all right? So that we can help you with some of that. That's a, that's a good method and formula for helping us. But we're going to have, we're going to, have to study. We, we, have a, we have a lesson that begs the question, why did we allow the devil to study? I just can't have, I, I, I can't tell you I'm fighting the devil and he's studying. And then I'm not studying. You know? But it says so he can clean himself up. There's something linked to that now. There's something that helps us in our mind and our heart to make us want to clean up. When you're studying, you know, that energy to do that uh, is increased. So I want us to hear from another fighter to help the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, but I wanted to acknowledge Brother Wakil Allah. Can you stand up? The author. In the name of Allah. And so, thank you so much, Brother, about the 5% ratio. You know, if, you, if you're not from the East Coast, you might not know a lot about the 5 percenters, but you know, there's a scripture that talks about a case being brought before Solomon and two mothers were claiming the same child. Right, right, right. And so Solomon, out of his wisdom, he said, well, then let's cut the child in half. <laughs> and then we can sell it. You take half and you take half. But the, the mother who the child really belonged to, on, out of her love for her child, yes. said, I'd rather the false mother keep the child yes. so that the child remain whole. That's the Honorable Louis Farrakhan not fighting over the nation of Islam. Because the five percenters were behind Minister Farrakhan yes, and he wanted to try to take the nation. I guess this is a part of history we don't know. But the five percent nation at that time yes, they said they would stand behind him yes, they and help him. I mean, the minister didn't just have to get on a plane and come to Chicago and submit them. He had a power base. And, and they up there, they had a plan on how to take Philadelphia apart and use Philadelphia against Minister Farrakhan and then ultimately take it from Minister Jeremiah and then they took New York apart by getting Farrakhan and Yusef Shaw out of there. Now I'm just bringing up some of the history on the East Coast because if you try that small time stuff again, you might find some unwilling subjects. You know, because we provide a little history this time. I want us to hear from a brother that have been working with many that have been affiliated with the Five Percenters, Nation of Islam, and people coming into the knowledge of Islam. But we need more of our young people energized for this. And see, the generation that we produced, uh, they don't have any fear in them of the Caucasians. The fear that was bred in us, Minister Abdullah, formerly John Shabazz, told us one day it will be bred out of us. We see that in the kind of generation that's coming up now. They don't, they're not scared of jail. They're not scared to fight somebody on the street. They look at death every other day. And they're not walking the streets in fear. So when you start talking about, well, what they're doing in Iraq is coming over here, you ain't scared of nobody. And I go to the prisons all the time, and I can tell you the younger people coming in prison, they're not in there talking about, oh man, uh, I did wrong, I want to reform. They said, next time I'm not going to get caught. <laughs> and some of them are saying, you know, they're not taking me alive. That old James Cagney, Richard Whitmark stuff that some of us grew up for. They got that kind of attitude. And we might call them gangsters, but the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, with that wisdom that he's working with, he understands now, this is a warrior generation that's just looking for the right kind of general that knows how to point to the right enemy and get them ready for themselves. They shouldn't be coming after us, they should be defending us. You, you follow what I'm saying? So the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, 
understanding that they're fulfilling uh, the book of Judges. Samson was strong and he could take down their kingdom, but when they gouged out his eyes, he still had powers to destroy, but he didn't have sight of how to get out of under what his power of destruction could do. So Samson was ultimately destroyed with his enemies. That's our young people today. Their eyes are out, but they're strong. And uh, in that blindness, they need a guide now because their, their desire, what's yearning in them, they can't say it to us, but what's yearning in them is they want a new world. Yes, sir. And because they don't have the parents that have the wisdom of how to bring the new world in, suffer under being the little children. Give them the fire kind. Yes, sir. And I'm telling you, your child will be better for it. But we want to bring up our brother, Dr. Wesley Truist, to share a few words with us. Shame. 
We are unapologetic, but most importantly, we are prepared. We are prepared to fight, and we are prepared to win. That's right, sir. And these boot camps, Allah's grace to us, Allah's indication to us, the all thing we wondered, I wonder, how is it that the nation of Islam will rise and never fall again? Let's be honest, sometimes it's difficult to see how we won't fall again. Reflecting on our current situation, requires faith, tremendous faith, to believe that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, as the Christ said, will get us successfully to the other side. It takes faith to believe that more than 144,000 will make it, because it just doesn't look like that. It takes faith. But, I believe Allah put it in these brothers' hearts and mind and put it in Brother Robert's mind and inflamed his spirit to move forward, to bring together this boot camp. And now I can see how they're going through Go ahead. Come the on. Now I can see yes. Come on now. if the nation of Islam will indeed never fall. Yes, sir. And so now we're down to that time. I told you that one of the presentations that we did not see was the brother that really put this, uh, the genesis of a spiritual workshop into a boot camp. And what better place to have a boot camp? You know, white folks always talk about they dying with their boots on. You know, make you think about Texas, don't it? And uh, boy, I'm trying to tell you, and you know, uh, Texas is a racist state. And Texas got a little history. Uh, it hasn't always been a part of the United States of America. But there's a battle in Texas called the Alamo. You know, and, but one thing about white folks, they know how to, they lose a fight and still make themselves look like heroes. <laughs> successful in their military campaigns against you and everything. Yeah, man, but, you know, we went down. <laughs> but all the way from the state of Texas, boot camp, this brother did a thing on the Aramic priesthood, the ministry of the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. And I'm telling you, uh, when you see this, you this kind of presentation, we see ourselves more. We see ourselves in all of the presentation, but you can see us more as a people that give Aaron a hard time after Moses. You can see us more about why these fiery serpents are getting ready to come on black America. And all you gotta do is, just don't just listen to DAS and, and uh, Radio One and you're trying to find the latest hip hop song Scoot on down the dial a little bit and listen to Mike Savage, you know, and, and Dennis Prather and others and how they are feeding white America. 75 million white people listen to talk radio every day and the talk ain't good. And as they're getting fired up and that day, he's a man of fire and he tells a lot made with fire. So I will fire you from your job if I find out you with fire kind of persecution getting ready to start. And then when you are mad about losing your job, you go to the nearest bar and drink some fire water. Then he sell you a firearm. Huh? And now we are boom, boom, boom in our communities and he's a man of fire. 
But we got water over here. Yes, sir. Good pail of water. Yes. From a well of water that's unending. Right. And we will put your fire out. Right. So I'm here for the man today that's going to put the fire out. He's coming from the face of our Lord, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan today. Let's welcome all the way from Houston, Texas, Boston. If you want to write bad news, ready for some good. 
you know I've been laying there for so yeah, that's right, we did. Jump up again. Well, Karl Marx 
heart said, and he hit me with that old life. I go, well, I just submitted. I said, I'm just going to be quiet. Brother Shane, what did honorable life mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, honorable life Muhammad, Mr. Parker, said, gave us a big name to live up to. And if we are not silly, we will grow up into what he wants us to be. Yes, sir. Our school system is called what? The Muhammad University of Islam. Yes, but we barely have grade schools in some cities. Right, right, right. But yet it's a university. Universities confer doctorate degrees. He gave us a big name to live up to. Uh -huh. And if we're not silly, we won't get caught, as they say, stuck on stupid. Okay, okay. And we'll grow up into that. He said the name is the vision of what we are to become, to see what we should be when we grow up. So he allowed us to call ourselves minister, right, that's right. captain, right. secretary, right. sister captain. Right. He gave us the name Muhammad. He gave us the name Shabazz. He gave us all of these great names and attributes of God. But we have, we weren't that. We had to grow up into it. Now, Mr. Parker said, we are little children in the way of God. He brought us out there to Los Angeles for us to see something, to inspire us, to accomplish much in a short amount of time. He said, learn the technology that I have given you, put it into practice, and we will grow so fast. He said to us, brothers and sisters, the black people are waiting on the nation to get up. You didn't hear me. They're not waiting for the NAACP. Because they're sponsored by Anheuser-Busch. They're not waiting for the Congressional Black Caucus. Because they're sponsored by Pfizer, the pharmaceutical company. How can you do battle with your enemy, or let me put it this way, let me paint a picture for you, a metaphor. How can you get to the promised land on Pharaoh's chariot? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Farrakhan asked the question, what do we do, those who are there, after knowledge? He said, we have to start in our own house. We can't take to our people what we don't practice or we don't have. So we're going to have to start in our own house. Brothers and sisters, we got to all humble ourselves. Everybody. Forget what you think you know. Yes, your truth is your truth. Even what you hear from me today, your truth will be your truth. But forget what you think you know. Because it's that pride that has us where we are right now. And whenever we think that we can't learn something from anybody, we absolutely put ourselves in a state of decline, eventually death. Mr. Park, I said, you have to give to get what you need. Listen what? You have to give to get what you need. What do you mean? You have to give your time. That's right. You have to give your attention. That's right. You have to give your heart. You have to give in order to get what you need. He said, to seek help or what you need never makes us less. Some of us are too proud to say, you know something? I need help. I don't want to raise my hand and join the mosque because I don't want these people to know that I've been out of work for three months and man, I'm about to lose everything I got, man. I don't want people to know that I got a drug problem. I don't want people to know that I can't read. Come on, come on, come on. I don't want people to know that I'm homeless. Come on, I'm going to go around the corner, I'm going to pretend like I'm going to the car, catch the bus, but I'm really homeless. Go ahead, go. I don't want these people to know. Go ahead. Uh -huh. So I'm not going to join, but I do love to teach it. Gotta give me a bean pocket. That's gonna be the only meal I have for the next right. two days. Right. 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 Come on, come on. 
I don't want these people to know that I was abused as a little girl. I don't want them to know that every man I've ever been involved with has broken my heart. I don't want to join this thing. Every time I join, something happens. You've got to give, brothers and sisters, in order to get what you need. You've got to give us a chance. Give God a chance to heal you and I. Mr. Parker, and only a fool rejects a need because of the bowl of class it comes in. Uh, I'm gonna say so, I'm gonna put some of this in context. Just stick with me. Kind of put it in your file cabinet and pull it out when I can refer back to it. In the Holy Quran, the history of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he engaged in some warfare that the Arabs did not know and he dug a trench around the deep. He was digging this trench. And a Persian walked up to him. I can imagine walking to him and says, uh, the Holy Apostle, uh, what you doing? I'm digging a ditch. Why are you digging this ditch? Allah revealed to me that I should dig this trench around the deep. The Arabs weren't used to that kind of warfare. They were used to armies matching off or, or the greatest warriors fighting one another. And that, that's sometimes how they decided the whole battle when there were thousands of people on the battlefield. Right, right, right. But in this case, they rode their horses, their camels, the armies, they came to wipe out Islam. They got up to there, they seen this trench. And they, <clears throat> but before the trench was dug, this man named Salman the Persian. The apostle, why are you digging this trench? He said, Allah revealed to me dig the trench. He said, did Allah reveal to you that's the way you're supposed to dig the trench? He said, no, I'm just digging the trench. He said, well, let me help you. Let me help you. Now, I'm going to say this. Put it in your file cabinet. I'm not going to elaborate on it. I don't want to get ahead of the leader. You'll hear more on Tuesday and later. Mr. Farrakhan is never a man that would ask you to do something that he's never done. That's right. He does not ask the brothers to sell Farrakhan call newspapers when he carries stacks, even as a minister of Muhammad right. speaks. That's right. He never asked us to do That's anything right. he hasn't done himself. That's right. Man is 76, going on 77 years old. Doesn't he look good? Yeah. Well, that's because he practices how he can live. He would never ask you to do something that he has not done. I'm going to read this again. Only a fool rejects a need because of the bowl of glass it comes in. Come on now. He said to us, Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, <laughs> that people would come from all around to teach us everything that we need. Yes. Up to and include the peaceful and non-peaceful use of the atom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In your and my lesson, just give me a little bit, put me in your file, the reference. We asked about the 5% in the poor part of planet Earth. Can I get a 5% of witness? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Let's see if I can get this right. At the end of it says, also Muslims and Muslim sons. become a Muslim son, so we know who the Muslim son is. Right, right. So at that time, when the Muslim sons come to help you and will you reject them because of who they were before they were put under the study? Why did we make them study?
ceases. Then we have the new beginning. And he says in the Holy Quran, the Holy Quran says in the hereafter, this continued progress. No repeat of yesterday. Our sojourn in America has affected us psychologically and emotionally. That's right. Go ahead. This is key. We are a contemporary of the Honorable Lewis Farrell. We're walking with him now. But we really don't know each other. We don't know him. And guess what? We don't know each other. Oh, you see me at the mosque. I'm that brother from Houston. And this, that. But what do you know about me? What do you know how I was brought up? What do you know about my mother, my father? Did I have a father? Where did I go to school? And if I went to school, what did I major in? What did I do? What, who did I walk with? What experiences do I have? What do you know? What do I know about you? I see you at the mosque. I'm that brother. This is a deep final cross. This is that. You paid your charity? Oh, please, you go. I got this squash pot. I got that bean pot. I got that lady.
something that's been pushed in the day. Yes, come on, man. We already recognize that if we're following God in person, this ain't no democracy. So how can uninformed people vote? So if he tells you 
to go someplace, I want you to look at the persons next to you. Look, look at everybody. Look at people. Look at everybody. Look, no, I'm serious, man. This isn't one of them Baptist church moves. Look at the person next to you. Now, why am I telling you that? Because in a few days, that person sitting next to you may not be there. Because he's going to give a command. And then those who follow him, like Moses and the wise man. Now, Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that no prophet of God would follow anybody like that. He said, that's how my father was following me, in suspicion and doubt. I don't know about you, but after what I experienced this week, I'm going to give you the 411. If you don't follow this man, you're a fool. Come on, yes, sir. There's only two sides in this war, God and the devil. Not to choose what he said. Look how ecumenical Minister Parker is. He, didn't, he had includes Christian preaching more Christian churches than mine. Come on, talk to me. Am I telling the truth? He reached out to the naturalists. He speaks at the naturalist convention. He speaks before all the professional groups, the black lawyers, the black doctors. This man is the leader of a nation. So his love is not just for us, but it is specific to us because he knows our role in resurrecting the dead. Sister and brother, don't do what the Honorable Elijah Mar said. He said some of us would get up to the door, the door of the air, right before it opens and we would turn away. And then he said that God would come and pluck some out of the fire that really ain't done any good. And pray them into the promise that there is your replacement is sitting right here. If you want to make it, do not follow Minister Farrakhan in suspicion and doubt. You say, I don't follow my own Lord Muhammad. Farrakhan deviated. He said, Where he said, Go from. Where he said, Stay from, stay from. Where you hear him listening, where you see him look at him. He told you what to do. If you're following Honorable Elijah Muhammad, then follow what he told you. If the minister deviates, that's on the minister. Because he told me, he said, brother, don't change the teaching while I'm gone. I'm going away to study. Have, have I captured the paraphrase? So that was his direct instruction to him. But he didn't instruct us that way. He didn't say, follow my minister unless. He didn't tell him that. So you make the choice. You and I are in the valley of decision. Right, right. Come on. I hope to see you. Like Jimi Hendrix said, if I don't see you no more in this world, meet me in the next one and don't be late. Oh, I hope that you're not late. I hope you don't miss the boat. This is serious. Y'all ready? Yes, sir. I'm going to go through this quickly. But I want you to understand what I'm going to put on my for you. The genesis of the spiritual boot camp came because I served on the Save the Day 2009 workshop committee. Brother, Brother Dimitri, who sends out all these emails, <laughs> called the spiritual toolbox, this may help you in your assignment. <laughs> You know, I send you all these stuff. So I start creating these files and say, just downloading these PDF files and whatnot. I said, this brother's pretty deep. I ain't got time to read all this stuff. <laughs> he puts on a workshop called Spiritual Toolbox. Mm -hmm. I go up in the thing because I like all I'm trying to stick my head in every workshop. But this one particularly interested me. So I'm going to go there. So I'm in this workshop. Brother Demetri gets up and he lays out his stuff. I said, whoa, this the cat here. Oh, man, this is deep. I'm sitting down, now I'm digging in. Then, I'm not, I don't have the sequence right, but this is how it went. Then you had uh, Brother Nuri get up. You know, Brother Nuri, he's an example of proper preaching and representation. <laughs> I'm sorry. If I could reincarnate myself, I'd reincarnate myself, Brother Noah.
NGT, what is the meaning of NGT and GCC and he turned that thing around way he made us the nation of Islam the MGT and GCC, male and female. And that's what we are to the prophet of God. Because we receive this word and we get impregnated. Oh, he broke that thing down. I'm like, what? Of gets up and he gets up in his smooth way. In the name of my wife. Brothers that 
said, well, out of the Philly mosque, they will fight five sinners. That's right. That's right. And while everybody was talking, they said, come, come here, brother. There's one brother named Tyrone. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and he, he, he stood, he said, brother, come here, brother. We go in the house and we go to safe for Yeah. <laughs> so he looked around and said, now, my brother, don't tell anybody I gave these to you. Gave me the lesson. Go ahead. I started studying the lesson. Tyrone, Tyrone, and Jeffrey. We were all up there studying the lesson, drinking coffee, listening to Pharaoh Sanders. Yeah. I, the, the thing played over and over in my head. The Creator has a master plan. Every time I read the lessons, I can hear it and I can taste coffee in my mouth. He said, happiness for all of us. Point, just stick with me. I'll get through this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna breeze through that. I'm gonna leave the flat, the presentation, so you can get it and review it yourself. My love for Philadelphia is one you don't know. Growing in upstate New York, grew up in, in New York, came to South Jersey by the shore, finished high school down there, went to college in Virginia, came back, but it's. Philly is a Philly kind of thing that kind of nurtured me. So I love Philadelphia. So I'm happy to be here. This is like home. It is home. My mother still has a home in South Jersey. So I'm not a stranger to WDAS. I'm not a stranger to the sounds of Philadelphia. We're going to get out. I don't get after all of that. We'll be out of here in a, you know. I'm so full, brother and sister. Please, let me get this up off of you. You, you, never, you never want to, if something would have happened to me, I mean, between now, and if God would just take my life, I would thank him for the life he's given me, but I would, uh, there would be a little sadness in my heart because I didn't give you all of what, I want to leave here with no fight in the gym. No fight, I don't want to leave no fight in the gym. I want to leave it all here in the ring. You should stand up and join the nation today. I'm telling you straight up. We are what you need. We are what you've been waiting for. You're skeptical. I understand. It's all right. I've been at this thing, man, since I've been 19 years old. I know Mr. Farquhar this last month, 34 years ago, I know Mr. Farquhar at Hampton University. It's been 34 years like it's been 34 problems, like there's 34 chapters in the book of Deuteronomy before they went into the promised land. With our shortcomings, but trust and believe. I'm gonna leave you on a high note because there ain't nobody. The last man standing today is far You ain't got another one, and you won't have another chance unless you stand up and get the spirit of progress. I keep pulling myself away. I'm in this workshop and I'm looking and, and I, I, I get a cold sweat, I, I start panicking. So I begin to find believers from Houston, Southwest region, and I grab them by the hand and I drag them over to his book stand, Brother Demetrius' book stand. I said, you got to buy these books, get that flash drive, get his books. I said, you all missed it. Some believers were a little short, say all of his books came up to like, say, $65. If they had 40, I gave him the 25. I said, please get these, bro, please. I was dragging everybody I could find up there. He, was, he didn't know me from Adam. He knew of me. He said, this boy is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I come back with a whole nother group of them. Here, here, buy these books. He played. I know people from his Allah team were going, this guy. He keep coming back. Right, right. Why? Because you can't be a Muslim unless you're born for your brother and sister, but you're born for yourself. You, you understand? What good is me knowing and nobody else knows? That's no fun. 
Then I came up with the idea. I said, you know something? We're at war. When we're at war, you got to have boot camp. So we got to have a spiritual boot camp. So I went back to Houston. And I asked Donald Lewis Fire God's permission to put on a spiritual boot camp in Houston. And I invited all of them. The only one that couldn't make it was, uh, was Brother Nuri, because he was teaching in New York. So we brought in Sister Donna Fire to be our evangelist. Oh my God. <laughs> We had it just like you did. So this isn't something we don't know what we're doing. We're not just throwing stuff up against the wall, hoping it stick. We know what it did for my region. So you wonder why Houston gave Chicago all they could handle in the, in the, in the Savings Day Drive? Come on now. Because actual faith equals actual facts. Come on. Come on you can hear me. That didn't go over well. Well, you just, you just chew on that. For a little while, actual faith determines your actual facts. Yes, sir. Wow. So being fed, master for our mom. All right. Makes you not be doubtful. Because the Holy Quran says in this book, yeah. there is no doubt in it. It is a guide for whom? For those who keep their duty. Right. If you don't keep your duty, it can't guide you. And get to like thinking like when Mother Tanetta kissing on this side and that side, open it up and think we can find the an answer. That ain't how this book is used. You can't use the Quran without a companion sunnah. Uh, if you don't know the life of the prophet, you don't understand the context in which most of this was revealed. You don't know the difference between a Mecca and a Medina chapter if you don't understand what was going on that made Allah say these things. When it says they have cool who Allah who ha say, he's God giving Muhammad a command, say this, Muhammad. Christian training, you know, we're more able, the Christian pastor can go in this past ever. You have to learn the Quran in that way to solve your problems. Right, right, right. Why was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad have to learn, read 103 books about the life of Prophet Muhammad if we shouldn't learn the life of Prophet Muhammad so we'll know how to get Come Islam on, over in our own lives? That's right. Come on now. See, good Come on now. Take it plain. That's right. So, the spiritual who can is a product of a longing in my heart to prepare you for the onslaught that is to come. Those of us who were around, I wasn't in prior to 75. I decided in December 74 or so, I'm going to join the nation. You know something, when I get myself together, when we get ourselves together, man, right, right, right. we're going to join the nation because ain't nothing else, man. I'm going to stop eating hog, man. Join the nation. Yeah. Start drinking this, 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 this old English ain't honey. Right. Start smoking this reefer, loose joint nickel bag. Start smoking this black. I'm joining the nation. Right. And when I get myself together, point at a picture of Sister Donna Farrakhan, Sister Maria Farrakhan, in that special just in February 14, 1975 edition in the progress section, said right. two great families united. And I said, me and my boys are sitting around there. I said, and when I get myself together, I'm going to marry me an MGT just right. like that. Oh, growing up in New York, I grew up in New York. My grandmother's house was right around the corner from Mosque Number Seven. Trust and believe, my grandmother never got robbed, never got mugged. Cause the brothers were on the corner with that. Oh, the street selling that oh, there was no crime around here, and the height of heroin. Not around there. I'm scared of them brothers, cause I seen the baddest dope addicts, pimps, pushers, and whatnot step off the curb when the MGT was caught. Everybody knew the green, you knew the teacher. 
see us go through what we went through. Go ahead. So, it's a spiritual warfare. Go ahead. Let's, let's, let's make sure that the, the rank and file believer can defend point number 12. He can defend the point number 12, all the rest is easy. Yes. 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 It is. God is a man after being taught for 6,000 years, he's a spook. You can handle that with the tools we gave you. Brothers and sisters, you'll be fine. But you don't have to waste your time arguing with no Bible. Get in the book. He said, look, I'm not going to argue with you. I might have misquoted him. So you say to a brother and sister, here, here, brother. I got a message to black man. That's why you're going to have an extra one. You might have to give it away. Yeah, but I ain't got time to argue with you. Read this. There you go. Come on. Thus saith the Lord. Yeah. Allah is God. Who is that mystery God? That's right. Oh, you just start right there. That's right. So, brother, let me quote the most honorable Elijah Muhammad for you. I, I heard what you said, all that. I heard all that. Good quote in the Holy Quran. Your Arabic is pretty good. That's good, brother. Yes, Pastor, I heard you. I know God in the Spirit. We saw what's in the Spirit, too. I heard all that, Pastor. That's fine. But let me tell you what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad says to what you said. And I quote, sir, for thousands of years, the people who did not have the knowledge of the person or reality of God worshiped their own ideas of God. He has been made like many things other than what he really is, unquote. You should get this book, sir. And go argue. Go argue with him. He lays it all out in the chapter of God. That's right. Why? Because if you know how they to live is from who? God in person. Then I don't need anybody else's diet. How they deliver is the basis of everything that I do. Now, if there's some scholar scientists that bear witness to how they deliver, then fine. But that should be the basis of what you do because God has come and delivered to you and I a body of knowledge that if we follow it, we would have life and life more brother. You said, well, man, brother Robert, we're tired. We're hot. Time to go. Let me go right through this. Brother and sister, look. Aaron's priesthood. We need a nation of priests and priests to minister to not only our people, but to the world. Preparation for the promised land. Priesthood wasn't established until they were in the wilderness, making the transition from slavery to freedom. God came in Exodus, gave them the law. Right. Leviticus gave them the law. Yeah. Came back again in Deuteronomy, had to teach it again because the rebel rebel so bad in numbers, yeah. he had to kill off the men of renown. Yeah. Ahead, in Deuteronomy, he had to re he had to literally God had to kill a whole generation because they were so scary. They didn't want to even go into the promised land that he promised them. They weren't trying to pick a leader to go back to Egypt. Yes, they were. Uh, so he had to kill them off. Then take, in the book of Numbers, there's two senses that are taken. One when they're in the Sinai, and the other one when they're right there on the, on the Jordan River in the Valley of Moab about to go into the Promised Land. Because he had to take two senses because there was one group that came out, another group that was about to go in. Deuteronomy is the second issuing of the law because he had to teach a whole other generation the law. So in preparation for that, he blessed a priesthood to be established to hold the codes, the ordinances, the laws, the folkways, the mores, the norms, the values, the attitude that God gave through Moses so that they would be able to carry it over and it wouldn't be dependent upon the personality. That's right. Children of Israel never had a king till they asked for one. Because God was their king. It's only when they started in 2 Samuel, they started demanding a king. 
like other people have. Right, right, right. But you know, before they had judges, they had leaders, but they never had a king because God was their king. That's right. Go ahead. Right. Right. We ready? Wait. Sir. M.U.I. College of NOI Theological Studies. My Amen. vision, my goal, is that the Muhammad University of Islam one day will confer degrees. Come on now. Confer degrees in our theological studies. Meaning, if you are a Bachelor of Arts, you come to the, uh, about this teaching of the nation of Islam, you come and study and you get a Bachelor of Science in the, in the nation of Islam's theology. A place where laborers and officials can be qualified. Oh, there you go. Come on now. Taught the teachers and taught proper handling of the people and management and administrative skills. and then I can go on and do what I do. Right. I can be an HR manager and do what I do. Right. But I know when I come to the mosque, I'm going to be handled a certain way because the person standing before me, meeting me at the door, handling my business, is qualified, certified, uh, and bona fide to do. Yeah. I'm going to run through this. The Muslim program is our constitution. Right. 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 Minister Lord Farquhar said the Honorable Elijah Paul said him. That is our constitution. So you have to know what the Muslim want, what the Muslim believe. That's right. And what the Muslim believe, point number 12, God in person, Master Prophet Muhammad, is the cornerstone of the nation of Islam. Right. You take that out, the whole thing, the whole building right. collapses. Yeah. All right, come on. In the fall of the nation, they attacked Master Prophet Muhammad. That's it. Come on. Well, see, Master Prophet Muhammad was a reverse psychologist. Yeah. He wasn't a guy, he was just a, a trickster. So that means that Donald Elijah Muhammad couldn't be a messenger. Let's say he was an angel. No, he couldn't be an angel, so he was a great social reformer. By the time we looked up, in about a year and a half, Master Prophet Muhammad was a trickster who had good intentions, and Donald Elijah Muhammad was just somebody that got duped. By that time, we had all the essence of what we were sucked out of us. And as the nation changed, in New York, my grandmother lived on 117th Street, and the FOI went away, and they created this thing called BAP, or whatever they created, my grandmother and, my, and, my, and her husband got mugged and robbed on the street, and we had to move them for their own safety out of the neighborhood they'd grown in. And when I took away my grandmother's freedom, or my mother did, and took her in, there was the decline of my grandmother because she's an independent spirit. And when you had to take them in because they were beat up in their own community, lip busted, purse snatched, and all of that, when the FOI came and up, you don't tell me nothing. I know it personally affected me. Yeah. All right, let me stop. Okay, there it is, the Muslim program. We believe that Allah God appeared in the person of Master W. Frog Muhammad, July 1930, the long-awaited Messiah of the Christians and the Mahdi of the Muslims. We believe further and lastly that Allah is God and beside him there is no God and he will bring about a universal government of peace wherein we can all live in peace together, unquote. <laughs> Messiah of the Christians, Mahdi of the Muslims. This is written, Mr. Farrakhan told me, told me. This is written as if it's speaking of one man when it's really speaking of two. Yeah, that's right. Come on. Man. Master Prophet Muhammad is the man. Right. But he made a Messiah. Right. Let's move on. Now, next. There you go. Brown Mrs. Black man. Ain't no need to argue. Page one. That's where it came out. Page one. Page one. Go to that. But thought I'll repeat it again for the sake of the record. For thousand years, the people who did not have the knowledge of the person or reality, God worshiped their own ideas of God. He has been made like many things other than what he really is. Come on now. Next. Most honorable Elijah Muhammad, as you've already seen, Brother Anthony went into it in his fullness. We'll give you an example again of how you defend it. Go to the messenger's teachings. You gotta make it up, you ain't gotta win it. Let's go right here, There's a whole section that he wrote of starting from uh, page uh, 60, but 61, where he begins to give you his support of his claim of God in person. All right, man. In argument, you lay forth a claim. Come on. I 
was taught by God. That's what he said. That's his claim. So what's his support of that? He gives you the laws of nature and science. Right. Paragraph on page 61, paragraph 4, pull it right here. Let me read it for you. Put on my glasses. Looking, quote, looking at God's creation, the universe, and his creatures without number and unlimited, we have never been able to obtain the knowledge of just how God created this universe and himself. So now you're dealing with the laws of nature and science. That's right. That's right. Page 62, paragraph 4. Now here's the bottom. He's using scripture. <laughs> he says, quote, the Bible's prophets make a prophecy of his coming and not of his presence, and not of his presence, and only of the Spirit of God, not as a person. Therefore, the people worship the Spirit, joy and gladness of God, as being the real person of God. They do not believe in the reality of God, only in spirits, wood, stone, iron, gold, silver, sun, moon, stars. Some even worship beasts, animals, fowl, snake, fire, and water as God. This nonsense is to be broken up in these days by the presence of the real God in person, unquote. Making this case. Go ahead. Mathematics. Yes, page 65, paragraph 4. Come on. It is natural to quote. It is natural to say that God is the spirit of truth, of life. It is natural to say such and such a one is a liar. But where there is no one to tell a lie, there is no lie. So it is with truth or the spirit of truth. If there is nothing to produce the spirit, there is no spirit. Nor can we know the truth without someone to teach the truth. Where there is a man, there is a spirit. Where there is no man, there is no spirit, for the spirit cannot produce itself. <laughs> History, page 71, paragraph 3. This man, Yaku, taught his people every trick that he thought would help them in ruling the black nation up to the time of the coming of God, of God from our nation. Without the knowledge of the history of our people before the making of the white race, you will never be able to really understand who God is. With the teachings of the prophets and their histories, it is really foolishness to believe that God is other than a man. This is how you have to go at this thing. There's a claim, there's support, and there's a warrant. The laws of nature and science, you can argue with that if you want to, but Islam is mathematics, and mathematics is Islam, and you can prove it in no limit of time. Mathematics at its root means a search for the truth. Scripture. I'm the last mama took you and I through scripture. Mathematics. When you have a, a, multi, a, a multiply and a multiplicant, I got that right? Huh? You produce what? A what? Say it again? A product. Let me go back to that again, because you say, well, I didn't get the mathematics on that, brother. He didn't say mathematics. He didn't say mathematics, brother. I didn't, I didn't hear that. He says, quote, where there is a man, there is a spirit. Where there is no man, there is no spirit. For the spirit cannot produce itself. Produce product. That's right. That's just one of the examples. Come on. Now, I'm, a, I'm not going to read through this, but I want you to make note of it. And again, I'm going to leave this so that you're going to have a copy of it. That's right. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad defends his messengership. That's right. In A Prayer for the Messenger, page 157, no. Misunderstanding and Misinterpretation, 186, We Need Not Have Fear for the Future, page 248, That's and The awesome. Fulfillment of Prophecy, scene 286. Now, I want to make one note for you so that you don't get confused. And this, again, is why we got to go back and we have to make absolutely sure that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's words are captured in this pristine way. Now, if you go to page 248, the message to the black man, you see here, it says, hypocrites, disbelievers, and obedience, we need not have fear for the future. Let me quote the first uh, paragraph, and then I want you to write this down. These above words 
uh, those of disbelievers and hypocrites. The disbelievers and hypocrites are prophets and messengers of God never want to give them credit and honor and bear witness with them in saying that the message they are delivering to the people is from the Lord of the world's God, unquote. But brothers and sisters, we need not have fear of the future is not the quote. No, it's hypocrite, disbelieves, and obedience to quote. The quote actually that should be in here is the Holy Quran, Surah 32, verses 1 through 3. That verse should precede that chapter, that, that paragraph. That's what he's referring to. So we got to begin to be scientists of his word and love his word so much we don't want one thing out of place. Because we got children. And I don't want our babies growing up in the world without the honorable Elijah Muhammad. Right? The Lord God. We can't have that. I don't want this work. I don't want to get that. I'm going to get it. We're already in trouble. God's people prophesied in slavery. It's in Genesis 15, 13. Abraham's seed in bondage. I'm going to roll through this next one. God visited. Why? God, if we slavery, Mr. Farquhar, I said, we have to go into slavery. What we suffered, I know it's all oh God. We suffered 150 million of us died in the slave pay. We were robbed of our knowledge of ourselves. Our men, our men, our men, our men. Okay, all oh, that's true. It was a shame, and yo, how the cost is not great enough. Oh, to oh, just stop that old baby talk. If that had not happened to us, God wouldn't have came out of hiding. That's right. Mr. Parker said that happened to us so that God would come out of hiding. So God visits us in person. He comes down to separate his chosen people from the oppressors and guide them to the promised land. Next week. God chooses both Moses and Aaron. You didn't hear me? God chose both Moses and Aaron. Don't tell me about the honorable Elijah Muhammad being a man like Moses and then did that Aaron.
Yeah. Where are you Okay, brother. Thanks. What was God's purpose in establishing the priesthood? Come on. To teach the law. To maintain the ark and the law. Offering sacrifices, atonement. Maintaining the tabernacle in the temple with nothing else. We have to maintain this. Right. Officiating in the holy place. Come on now. Adjudicating disputes. Blessing on the peacemakers, for they should be called what? Children of God. Yeah. And tithe collectors. Sound like we raised them savings they give them. That's what the priesthood does. Next. Now, what are the characteristics, the characteristics that differentiate the priests and the Levites and the children of Israel? Come on. Well, the characteristics that separate is dress. The high priest, look how he's dressed. The real high priest. <laughs> See the real high priest. Huh? Their diet. That's right. Big foot versus bean pie, squash pie. <laughs> huh? Their occupation, the way they got paid. They split up the promised land among all of the children of Israel, all the tribes got a piece of the promised land except for the Levites. Come on now. Listen. They received tithes from all the other tribes because they dedicated their lives to the preservation of God's word in the promised land. Right. This is why the minister tells us as ministers, we shouldn't worry about where our bread, our, our bread and coke is coming from. Right. If we serve, we will be taken care of. You and I have to get that spirit of reciprocity among us. Yes, if a man or woman will sacrifice their whole life to serve you, then what should you be doing? Come on, sir. But we don't want to look like that. We don't dress like that. That's right. <laughs> That's how we dress. They have a different dress. You and I can't dress like the world. We have to be different because we're God's children. Dirty thing. You cannot be <laughs> ghetto fabulous and hood rich. It can't be us. We have to dress differently. We have to dress differently. They made us, this is the image that they put in our people's heads back from the start of Hollywood. Angel Mama on the pancake box. Butterfly McQueen. She wins, she wins the, the Oscar for playing, for playing a, a maid in Gone in the Wind. Al Joseph, Eddie Cannon, all these black, white men dressing up like black people with black face paint on. Mammy, I come from Alabama just to eat your eggs and mammy. Mammy. <laughs> When they went from Barville and established Hollywood, this is how they portrayed us to the world. The fools and clowns. They make us unfit for God's blessing and God's choice. But this is what we replace. That is what we This is what we make a in our people's here. See the contrast. Yes, sir. Two, Two different worlds. Right. Old world going out, new world is coming in. Yes. So I close this slide presentation and I'll wrap it up, going right back to where I started. So that you can have this practically applied to you. The NOI College of Theological Studies should be a national museum. Because many of you got pictures of Minister Jeremiah and the believers from Bible 75 and all the stuff that you did. But they're in some garage or something, and you got an older brother that might die, have a heart attack, and his wife might not like the nation. She'd take all that stuff and throw it in the dust. Yeah. We got to go around and beg them for that stuff so we can create an archive. That's right. We've got to document our history. You heard what I said, document our history. Hey, you got some pictures we can copy. We need to document this history. That's right. You agree? Yes, sir. We got to have archives. Come on. So when these people come from overseas and want to study the nation of Islam, they come to our national archive right. to study us and 
instead of getting it from these third party sources. That's right. That's right. They just released the, the killer of Malcolm X. Trust me, brothers and sisters, that, that's a, that's, that should be a sign to you that the fight is almost on. They get ready to start it. You gotta be ready. Come on, man. They released the only one that they caught. Come on, man. Watch and see what happens. Watch and see. They're coming after us. But if you read books on Malcolm X, you're reading quotes of quotes of quotes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. That never had, were never in the nation, never affiliated in the nation. Right. These are people quoting people, quoting people. We know in academia what they do. Right. It's supposed to be reliable sources. But they're not. Right. They're people who made stuff up right. Right. and they're copying stuff from people who made stuff up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, no matter how we dress up, 
no matter how many, many times we quote the supreme wisdom. Our greatest frustration is having supreme wisdom and not being able to apply it. This is the bridge between B and it is. B and it is. See, there's a process that takes place. The and is the process. It's the bridge between the command and the actualization. Our frustration is, is that when we get in the and, we always never seem to be able to get to, and it is. So we're frustrated. It feels like a revolving door. We say, man, we used to do this. We used to do that. We, but that was a different time. Today, we're dealing not with flesh and blood. Where it's a memory, it's not like you forget it. Yeah. Right. But now it doesn't have you. 
able to differentiate between the first officer and your Uncle John. That's right. So they were able to differentiate between Brother Robert and whoever he was. <laughs> and Robert Do you understand? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. We have been unjust to our sin. Confess your faults. There's a process. There is a modern technology. That's right, Brother Robert. There is modern equipment yes, that will help us make a faster pace. Right. Our brains, those of you who are in IT, are like computers. And when you have a whole lot of programs on there, or viruses on there, your, your computer does not work right. Why can't we seem to figure out our problem? All this brilliance in the room, yet we can't open up this, we can't open up that. What is it that's stopping us? We got people in here that can quote the supreme wisdom from color to color. Why are we making progress? We got people in here that can quote this Quran from cover to cover. The message is teaching from cover to cover. No MGT teacher, no FOI teacher. The damage that's been done to us through slavery uh -huh. and that we've done to ourselves. And sometimes, brothers, we are unjust to women and unfaithful to women because they're the old girlfriend that broke our heart. You don't like the Delphonics right now. Every time you hear William Pookie and them say, I've been lying to myself. <laughs> saying that I love somebody else. Every time you hear it, you turn it off. Why? Because she broke your heart. You hit the stylistics in your head. At that instant, she broke off and ran off with your best friend. You were thinking the stylistics, you'll never get to heaven if you break my heart. That's right. So now every time your girlfriend, your wife, does something that your old girlfriend did is set you off. And you do things to her because you can't differentiate between 1972 and 2010. I can't get ahead of the boss. Go ahead. I want you to get all of the messages teachings. I want you to set aside at a minimum two hours a day to study. All right, come on. Get up for prayer, study for an hour. Do an hour of study. Yeah. Study. Fill your head with his words. Fill your head with his spirit. Study with a good dictionary. Never go past a word that you don't really understand. Because when you do, they get to the bottom of the page, the whole page is blank because you missed that word. You can't tie it together. You can't connect the dots. You might have understood everything above it, but you pass by a word, and then you kind of skip over it, and then you go down the bottom, and you can't remember a thing you read. Why can't why? And then you close the book. Ah, look up words. Break them down. Learn how to use. Learn the synonyms, the antonyms. Right. And then go on, and you will find that your study will enrich and your vocabulary will increase because the average man speaks 400 words, consider it well. Well, if you ever looked at a big, a real good Oxford dictionary, they only speak 400 words, but you got a real limited vocabulary. Right. <laughs> so, my dear brothers and sisters, I thank you for your patience. Thank you. I thank you for your honor thank you. of being so patient with me. And I hope and pray that you'll open up your hearts and your minds for Tuesday night and for beyond. And be just in anticipation. Whatever it is, I want to drink of whatever we had out there. I don't know what it was out there, California, sunshine, whatever. I was in a spiritual boot camp for six days. The minister is happy. I'm happy. And I see the promised land. We're getting ready, brothers and sisters. Come on. You get ready. And put on your whole arm of God. Right. And let's get ready and hold on to, to this. That God appeared in the person of Master Frog. Yeah. I want you to hold on to that. That God loved you so well. I know the Christians say that God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. They'll hit you with John 3 and 16 all day long. But I want you to say one better. God
Allah. Please be seated. We want to ask a very important question. Is there anyone here today that is out for their first time? This is number one for you. You've never been out before. Thank you, sir, for the least of your hand. Is there anyone else like that? Is there anyone else? If you're out for your first time, and maybe you didn't take advantage of your first time, so you're out for your second time or third time. Yeah, come on, come on. How many of you that are out for your first, second, or third time feel that what you heard today, what you looked at today, is the truth and good for us as a people? Thank you, sir. His hand went up. Come on up, sir.